Why can't a Mandalorian remove his or her helmet? We've seen others do it. And why does it seem it isn't all Mandalorians that follow this rule? In the Book of Boba Fett, Episode 5, the armorer tells Din Djarin that he is a Mandalorian no more because he admitted to removing his helmet in the presence of others. And it seems that Mando's deeply depressed by this decision. He must now travel to Mandalore to absolve his sins. Sins. Removing his helmet. We are getting ever closer to The Mandalorian Season 3. We'll most likely see Mando, or Din Djarin by his given name, head to Mandalore too. Why don't you purify yourself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka? No, I mean the waters beneath the surface of Mandalore, the once home of the Great Mandalorian Society. But why? Well, what's the matter? Is he stupid? No, he's following the rules because that's what his covert believes in. That was what he was raised up in. That's the simple answer. I could say deal with that and stop the video right now. But I can't leave well enough alone. Let's poke and prod, shall we? The deeper question should be, why does his covert of Mandalorians, the Children of the Watch, believe removing a helmet means leaving the Mandalorian society as a whole? Doesn't it just believe that you have to leave their covert? No, they believe you're no longer a Mandalorian, just like the armorer said. It's like one of my children breaking one of my rules, then I tell them they're no longer American. Then I revoke their citizenship. I can't do that. I don't have that authority. What makes the armorer and Paz Vizsla think they have the authority to do it to Din Djarin from the Mandalorian society? I mean, he wasn't on thin ice before this point. He had the dark saber, and they were impressed with that. He didn't do anything culturally against the Mandalorians as a whole. He didn't start an uprising, which Mandalorians do that all the time, and they're forgiven of it. So why do they think they can take away his citizenship as a Mandalorian because he removed his helmet? Something so simple. Rook cast, I mean, the armorer, is an extremist. She started an extremist cult. We can see that, and Bo-Katan says as much in The Mandalorian Season 2, that he is from a religious zealot cult uh, called the Children of the Watch. Now, anyone can say what they want about this Mandalorian sect, but we don't know for sure. We don't know if they are formerly Death Watch, or if they are actually children of Death Watch, or if they're just some splinter group, kind of like the Night Owls in Bo-Katan were if they just splintered away from Death Watch and just start calling themselves Children of the Watch because they felt like being even more fanatical than Death Watch itself. The rule likely came from the aftermath of the Night of a Thousand Tears or the Purge of Mandalore, where the Empire virtually destroyed Mandalore and its once prosperous yet warring culture. But just for poops and giggles, let's go back a bit. It seems Mandalorians have been casting judgment on other Mandalorians for some time, whether or not they are actual Mandalorians. Look at Jango Fett. Prime Minister Almec claims that Jango Fett's a common bounty hunter, yet Almec is in cahoots with Death Watch, the enemy of Jango Fett and his true Mandalorians. So his dispelling Jango Fett as a Mandalorian is invalid, right? Well, Prime Minister Almec doesn't think so, and Obi-Wan Kenobi seems to go along with it after a little bit of minor convincing. In fact, the war between the two Mandalorian factions, Death Watch and the true Mandalorians, is why Jango Fett left Mandalorian society in general. But I've already talked about that a lot. I still haven't answered the question yet. Why can't Mandalorians take off their helmets? The truth is, they absolutely can. Well, some of them can. But whether they are accepted into their homes again, clan or covert, is another story. Like I said before, it's like me telling my kids, you break the rules, you're un-American. That's kind of silly. But let's fall back on the Rezal Nari for answers. If you don't know what that is, the Rezal Nari, it contains the guidelines for a Mandalorian to be a Mandalorian. And those tenets are as follows. Raise children as Mandalorians is number one. Number two, wear armor. Number three, defend the family. Number four, help the clan to succeed. Number five, speak Mandalorian. Number six, rally to the cause of the Mandalore. The Mandalore is the leader of Mandalorian society. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at these. Um, in particular, number three and number four. Number three being defend the family. Number four, help the clan to succeed. Your family is your clan, your house, your covert, or 
just those close to you, related to you, or any foundlings that you may have gathered up to raise as Mandalorians. That's your family. Now, help the clan to succeed. Like I said, the clan is part of your family, and helping the clan to succeed is by following the rules of that clan, or that covert, or whatever. So these are two big tenets of Mandalorian society. These make you a Mandalorian. Din Djarin absolutely went against these two rules. Now, whether they were fair rules or not is up for debate. Yeah, sure, taking off your helmet shouldn't be that big a deal, but as the armorer says, our secrecy is our protection or our safety or something along that lines. I need to find the quote again, I guess. Oh, well, that's basically what she said. So these are rules that were set out and Din Djarin knew the rules. He understood the rules. He even said at one time, no, I didn't take off my helmet. Then another time he said, yes, I took off my helmet. Well, he kind of had no choice but to take off his helmet. He fell in love with the little green guy and showed him his face and showed Miggs Mayfield his, field his face. Mayfield field, May, you know, Meriwether Mayfield field, you know, the guy that he saved from the prison with uh, Cara Dune. The former Imperial turned big-hearted baddie. Not baddie in a bad sense, but baddie as in... He's a badass. Sorry, I liked Mayfeld. For when I first met him, I thought he was stupid. That little gun coming up over his shoulder and pew-pewing. That was kind of dumb. But by the end of that season, I was or the next season, I was like, Wow, this guy, he's cool. I like him. He's not afraid to, you know, just shoot somebody in the face in the middle of a crowd. I like it. All right, got a little sidetracked there. So let's take a look at it some more, shall we? Um, who can be a Mandalorian? Who can't? Based off those two tenets, well, seems definitely that Bo-Katan Kreese cannot be a Mandalorian if we're going by the Resolnari, that which Din Djarin seems to be sticking to pretty well. So Bo-Katan, we all think, okay, she got the Darksaber. She should be the leader of the Mandalorians. Wrong. She is now soulless in the eyes of Mandalorian because during the Clone Wars when Maul killed Pre Vizsla, Bo-Katan Kreese went against House Vizsla, her house, her clan, her society, went against them and revolted against them. She knocked out tenants three and four of the Resonari. She doesn't belong in Mandalorian society. That's if we're sticking to the strictest of words in this code. Now, if we're going to excuse Bo-Katan Kreese for her actions, then we have to excuse Mando, or Din Djarin, for him taking off his helmet. I mean, really, it was a life or death situation at one point, and then at another point, it was to, you know, shoo his little green guy away with Luke Skywalker. Like, get away, little dude. All right, here's my face. Go on, get out. But if we go back and we look at it, the only ones to actually stick close to the Rezal Nari have been Jango Fett and Boba Fett. First tenant raised children as Mandalorian, as Jango Fett did with Boba Fett as his foundling. Sure, we can all sit here and say he didn't raise him as a Mandalorian, but he did. He made him wear the armor, or taught him to wear the armor. He had him defend the family, and if you look at it, Boba Fett still defends his family. Help clan to succeed. Well, Jango Fett and Boba Fett were a clan of two, and Boba Fett was very successful, not just in his bounty hunting ventures, but in staying alive and keeping the clan going. Speak Mandalorian. If you look at the controls of the Slave One, it is in Mandalorian. So yes, Boba Fett speaks Mandalorian, so did Jango Fett. Rally to the cause of the Mandalore. Well, Jango Fett was the Mandalore at one time, and he rallied to the cause of the Mandalore before him, Jaster Muriel. Since then, there had not really been a Mandalore, not in title at least, so there was no real reason for Boba Fett to jump back into the cause. But now if you look at it, Boba Fett is going to be joining Din Djarin, who is the assumed Mandalore at this time because he has the Darksaber, an outdated antiquity that really has shown no reason to be a staff of leadership. Never has before. Why is it now? Yes, Boba Fett can take off his helmet because his clan, his family, his house, his covert of one person does not believe that removing a helmet is a sin. So yeah, he's allowed to do it. Bo-Katan Kreese, same thing. Her little night owl group are allowed to remove their helmets because 
they're not strict religious zealots who say you have to take you have to keep your helmet on to stay a mandalorian seems silly the children of the watch are the only ones we've seen so far that have that rule but din Djarin agreed to that rule and he was one of the children of the watch so yes they can say you're no longer a mandalorian because he went against tenants three and four of the Resolnari, defend the family help the clan to succeed now i'm not going to say that's just my take on it as to why a mandalorian cannot remove their helmet a mandalorian in general can remove their helmet a children of the watch mandalorian cannot and they can't remain in mandalorian society if they do remove their helmet because they agreed to those rules they understand the rules and as adults adult mandalorians they know not to remove their helmet Din Djarin did it anyway. Not saying he's right or wrong for doing it, just saying he did go against his clan's rules. And he, that goes against the Rezal Nari. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Am I way off base with this one? Probably not. But, you know, I'm not going to be arrogant about it. I am up for debate and I am up to change my mind if given, you know, proper feedback. So let me know in the comments and we'll discuss it. And thank you all for watching. This is Gerald with Star Wars Fanatic signing off, wishing you all great health happiness, prosperity. Thank you for watching. And remember, this is the way, the only way.